So is this Panasonic Lumix S5 the camera that is gonna make me finally retire my beloved GH3 and switch to full frame? Let's find out. My Panasonic GH3 is a great camera, and I've basically built my entire YouTube career on this old camera. And there has never really been a huge reason for me to switch because it still does everything that I need it to do. If you would like to see some of the videos that I've done already comparing my GH3 with other more cinema-centric cameras, I've made a little playlist right there that you can go check out. But basically, I've always been happy with this GH3. I think that the image that it puts out, even though it's just 1080p, I think it still looks great. You can up-res it to 4K and it looks totally fine. And that brings us to the Lumix S5. Now, I do just want to give you a little bit of context with this comparison and review and a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, I have used Panasonic cameras for a long time. As I said, this GH3 has been my workhorse for years. I was given this camera and I did some sponsored videos for Panasonic that you can check out right here, but they did not ask me to do this review and I am gonna be giving you my honest opinion. But that being said, it is gonna be a little bit biased because I do like Panasonic gear and I do still shoot with an older Panasonic camera. So just keep that in mind. This review is probably gonna be a little bit biased, but I'm not gonna tell you anything that isn't true about this camera. So this S5 is obviously in a completely different league than my old GH3. It still you know, produces a nice looking image. I'm shooting on it right now, but this Panasonic S5, just to give you a quick overview of what makes it so great, is it is a full frame sensor. Look at that, big old sensor, way bigger than a Micro Four Thirds. It shoots in 10-bit and full V-Log, which is really important. And you can do ProRes RAW out via HDMI into a Atomos Ninja V. You can shoot up to 180 frames slow motion with this. The Panasonic XLR adapter works on this camera. There's dual native ISO, which is insane. And it's also a very good photography camera, which is something that I find as a really big plus. Now this isn't really gonna be a comprehensive review. There are a lot of other filmmakers who have done really good full reviews of this camera. What I kinda wanna do with this video is kind of show you the biggest differences in the image that you would get with something like this versus my Panasonic GH3. And we'll kind of compare and contrast and see if the difference in image quality is enough for me to retire my old GH3 and switch to this Panasonic S5. So here we are on the Lumix S5. Now, I wanted to do a couple of different tests and comparisons between the image that I can get from this camera and my GH3 back there. Now, the three tests that I wanna do are dynamic range. I also wanna show the high frame rate differences. This camera can shoot up to 180 frames per second, whereas the GH3 maxes out at 60. Even though this S5 can shoot 4K, I still shoot all my YouTube videos in 1080p. Now, because the S5 has a larger sensor and a cleaner sensor, in 1080p, it should give a much more pleasing and nice looking image compared to my GH3. These aren't gonna be super scientific comparisons. I'm just gonna be shooting into my window, underexposing and overexposing, seeing which one can recover highlights and shadows better. So what I did is I took the S5 and the GH3, I put a 28 mil on the GH3 and a 50 mil on the S5, and I shot it against the window, and I overexposed three stops in the highlights, and then halfway through doing the test, I was like, what am I even doing this for? Everybody knows that the S5 is better than the GH3, so this is kind of pointless. So instead, let's talk about some of the vintage lenses that I've been using for the S5. So what's really cool about having a full frame camera is that you no longer have to deal with crop factors and you know doing math. These little FD 50 millimeters can be had for like 50 bucks on eBay. And also the 28 mil, which I'm shooting on right now. This is a 28 mil F 2.8. These vintage lenses, super cheap options, especially if you don't want to spend the big bucks on the L mount lenses by Panasonic and Sigma. Now here's the difference between a kickflip at 180 frames per second on the S5 and 60 frames per second on the GH3. So for sharpness, I'm not gonna be shooting any charts or anything like that. Instead, I thought that I would just do a super simple comparison between this shot right now. So I'm gonna zoom in on this shot. This is shooting in 1080p, 10-bit V-log, and this is the sharpness from this camera and lens combo. 
And this is the GH3 at 12 millimeters, which should be about a 24 millimeter equivalent field of view. And that's the sharpness from the GH3. So if I shot in 4K, obviously it would obliterate the GH3, but I still think that the GH3 actually kind of held up as far as sharpness goes when it came to 1080p. The lens that was sent with this S5 is the new 20 to 60 kit lens. Now it is a 3.5 to 5.6, so not the fastest lens, but you have to remember that on a full frame, that is still a lot better than most micro four thirds lenses when you take the crop factor into consideration. Like right now I'm shooting on an F 1.7 lens that's designed for a micro four thirds, but you'd probably get the same amount of bokeh as you would with like an F 3.4 lens on a full frame. So that's just something to keep in mind, even though this is only F 3.5 at the wide end, the background separation is going to look about the same as it does on this F 1.7 lens. Something that I really do have to mention with this Panasonic S5 is just how much more color information there is with this 10-bit codec. So when I've been shooting this review and you know trying to mix and match the cameras, the 8-bit codec on the GH3 is very, very apparent in the footage. Even at 1080p, this S5 shooting in 10-bit kind of destroys the GH3 when it comes to how much I can actually push the colors around. It looks so much better on this camera and it's a real hassle actually trying to match my GH3 to this S5 because the image from the GH3 you just can't do as much with. And I just feel like there's so much information here and it just looks so much better. So if we switch to the GH3, and here we are on the GH3. Now, there really isn't anything wrong with this GH3 image. It's just, I can't push the colors around and the dynamic range just isn't as good. So that's one of the main things that I like about the S5 is that 10 bit codec, but let's switch back. I definitely like the image coming out of this S5. And even with this kit lens, this is at F 4.1 at 30 millimeters. I think it still looks really good. There's enough background separation and definitely just as much as I would get with most of my Micro Four Thirds lenses. So this is the point in the video where I try to decide whether I should switch to a newer, basically better in every way and much more relevant camera like this Panasonic S5 and retire my old Panasonic GH3. Now the conclusion that I've come to is that I don't necessarily think that I would want to switch to this S5 full time. And the main reason being is because I have so many lenses for my Micro Four Thirds system. And I feel like investing in lenses for the L mount is gonna take some time and it's gonna take a lot of money. There are some small lenses for the S5 system and the body itself isn't that much bigger than my GH3, but most lenses, at least a lot of the ones that are really good, are gonna be about this size, which I still feel like is a bit bigger than I would like when it comes to just a run and gun travel friendly kit. But yeah, that was my review and comparison between this Panasonic Lumix S5. Even though this was not a sponsored or paid review, I do wanna say a big shout out to Panasonic for sending this out to me. If you'd like to check out, again, the videos that I created with this camera, I'll have a card up there and links in the description below to the two videos that I shot with this S5. Anyways, as always, if you would like to check out some more videos from me, you can click on either side of my face. Thank you so much for stopping by, and until next time, I'll see you all later.